Hi there. Today we're going to be looking um, at trig identities. It's basically using uh, what we saw last time, sec, cot, cosec, and our Pythagorean identities <coughs> to rewrite expressions. Uh, it's an identity because we've got this thing, the three line, rather than two line for equals, which means it's true for all values of, well, a in this case here. Um, so, when doing this, you can consider, especially for the more complicated ones, work in both ways. You start from the left-hand side, generally, and you want to end up with what's on the right-hand side. But you can often think about what the line above would be. It's not particularly relevant in this case here, but maybe for some of the ones later on. Uh, as a rough rule of thumb, if we've got expressions where on the left we've got more than one term, and on the right we've got a product, we are generally, as we're probably going to be doing here, um, looking at fractions and common denominators. Once you put common denominators, you're making it one single term, and then you see what happens. So what will they do if it's got tan and cot, and it's not obviously a Pythagorean identity, uh, change everything to sine over cos. If you get everything in terms of sine and cos, then we can look at what we're doing. So I'm writing LHS for left-hand side. So left-hand side, um, I can use equals for now. Equals, um, true for all values, uh, equivalent to, well, I don't think you're going to lose marks if you just put equals rather than that. So we're just going to use equals for now. So there's my rewriting. If I put everything under a common denominator of cos A sine A, and cross multiply, and get sine squared A on the top, plus cos squared A on the top there, well, sine squared plus cos squared, pi degree identity, as predicted, is 1 over cos A sine A. And we're almost there because I can rewrite that as 1 over cos A times 1 over sine A, and that's sec times cosec, which is on the right hand side. We do that, or a little tick, or whatever's like that. Okay, nice and straightforward. Um, example two: one plus cot x all squared is equivalent to. We've got two terms here, so I'm probably going to be expanding and looking ahead. I can already see that if that's my last line, I've got the two cot from there, and I'm probably going to be using a, a Pythagorean identity to rewrite the in terms of cos x squared. So let's see what we get now. And I've got the left hand side then is one plus two cot, not cot squared, sorry, two cot, uh, plus cot squared x. And I can just reorder it so I can, I'm showing what it is there. And that was the line above that I was expecting because cos x squared equals one plus cot squared. And it's nice, I could have probably gone from that to that, but because it's a show of that, so you're not going to get any marks for the last line. So it's nice to actually explain where it comes from like that. There's my right hand side, good to go. Let's have a look at a couple more then. Uh, sine tan plus cos uh, is equivalent to sec. Yet again, I've got more than one term there. I'm probably going to be sticking everything on the common denominator and seeing what happens. So I can rewrite everything in terms of sine and cos is very similar, I think, to the first example. So that's my left hand side there. Put it on the common denominator of cos A, and guess what I get? I get sine squared plus cos squared again, which is 1 over cos, which is sec, and that's my right hand side. Okay? Um, this one's slightly different because I'm going from a product on this side to two terms on that. So the chances are, especially because I've got cos squared in, I might be rewriting one of the terms in terms of two other terms and multiplying it out. And it looks like, because I've got that cos squared, I can write as 1 minus sine squared x times cosec. And I'm good to go because I've got that 1 times cosec to get cosec. And then minus sine squared times cosec, and cosec being 1 over sine. I can cancel that with one of those, and I've got the right hand side there. Okay, so I'm good to go. So in that case then, it's spotting that I'm going from a product to two terms because of the minus, 
I need to rewrite one of the things then in terms of two other things. So it's probably going to be a pi theta and identity, and that cos squared I can write as 1 minus sine squared. Uh, last example from this. Um, yeah, not obvious in some ways, but the fact we've got even powers and a minus, I'm looking at a difference of two squares. I can write the left-hand side then as the sum, sec squared plus tan squared. So sec squared a minus tan squared a. And hopefully one of those, well, I know that sec squared equals 1 plus tan squared. So I can say that the left hand side then is bracket sec squared a plus tan squared times 1. And I'm nearly there. What do I need the right hand side to look like? I need it to look like 2 sec squared minus 1. So what I don't need is the tan squared. So I can use the same identity to say that tan squared is sec squared a minus 1. And I've got my 2 sec squared, which is my right hand side. And that's it. So looking at even powers and minus, difference two squares, Pythagorean identities, common denominators, if you're not sure and it's got cot and tannin and whatever like that, get it in terms of sine and cos and then see what basically see what happens. It's there's no hard and fast rules with these which makes them quite difficult for a lot of students. But it's just a matter of thinking how to get from the number of terms on one side to the number of terms on the other side. Um, if it's going to one term, common denominator is the way to go. In this case, we need to look at things like difference two squares.